The story you're about to hear is true, but strange. Yep. I say, Conrad, need we travel this fast? I am driving, Meneer. Yes, I know, and I know the South African mails must go through, but this is such a rocky road that you... Conrad, another bump like that, and I won't be able to sit down for a... Out! Out! Oh, the axle, Meneer. It is broken. I shall have to wind it with wire. I warned you, Conrad. What's got into you anyway? You're a good driver. It's suicide to go as fast as you were trying to. I was trying to cross the spoke belt before dark, Meneer. The spoke belt? That is what they call this region of the Grot Karoo. When it comes dark, that is when he appears. He? This is the spoke belt. Near Alice. In English, the land of the ghosts. Have you never heard of the phantom wagon, Meneer? The ABC Radio Network presents Strange. True stories of the supernatural with your narrator, famous author, lecturer, and expert on strange and weird events, Walter Gibson. Thank you, Dorian St. George. The great Karoo of South Africa is a 60-mile tableland of desert and barren wasteland, and men who cross it swear they have seen the phantom wagon itself. It was close to sundown when the crude wagon which carried the mail between Cape Town and Beaufort West broke down. The day had been blazing hot, but as evening came and bats flickered through the sparse acacia trees, it began to turn cold, almost as cold as Major Ellis felt at Jan Conrad's words. Phantom wagon, that's nonsense. You don't believe in that rubbish, Conrad. If Meneer will help me with this wheel, it must come off before we can get at the axle. All right. You work on it, Jan. I'll see if I can inch it off. Yeah. I asked you a question, Jan. Better no questions, Meneer. Why not? We're here all alone. Nothing to do but repair this nuisance of an axle. Or did you make it up? Make it up? Yes. To cover up the fact that you're an ignorant Africander who can't tell one end of a mail cart from the other. Ah. Meneer, so I see why you do this. I thought you would. You wish me to speak of the phantom wagon, yeah? Very well. Even if I know your reason very well, your trick has worked. There is a phantom wagon, Meneer. Here on the Grot Karoo, this wild country. It goes back to the Boer War, over 60 years back. You have heard of the Boer War, Meneer. It was when the British fought the South African Dutch. So, now you believe? That's the story. A wagoneer who was carrying supplies to Cape Town for defense against the British. But if he's a ghost now, then why should you be concerned? I'm British. This ghost should be after me. He was betrayed, Meneer. Betrayed? By one of his own countrymen. So it is said he roams the felt, searching for an Afrikander like me. Jan, you weren't born till long after the Boer War. Yeah, but a ghost. What does a ghost know of time, Meneer? Time has no meaning for a ghost who roams and searches. Time has lost its meaning. Only revenge remains. What? I don't believe that. You know that. Yeah, I know. But now it gets dark. Believe or not, it is better we not stay here. We work, Meneer. The sooner we get away. What in blame the horse? He has broken rules! The horse fled, looking himself like a pale ghost in the darkness. Ellis expected Jan Conrad to be the first to run after him. Instead, the driver hesitated. Jan, come along. We've got to round him up. It is dark, Meneer. But without the horse, we'll be here not only tonight, but all day tomorrow. 
And you know what it's like here by daylight. We'll burn under the sun. It is very dark. And it's cold. You mean you're afraid to? Very well, I'll get the horse. Yeah, that is best. You take care of the axle. Yeah. And uh, make a fire. A fire? It's cold, Jan. And you'll need it to work by. And besides, I've got to find my way back, don't I? How can I find you if there's no campfire to guide me? The moon rose as Ellis went after the runaway horse. But it was a pale, thin moon that gave little light and made the barren Carew seem even more barren and full of queer shadows. Stumbling all over. Where is that brute of a horse? Well, at least Conrad's kindled a fire. I won't get lost. But Ellis did get lost. The ground dipped and the campfire disappeared. There was no sign of the missing horse or of the campfire. Conrad! Conrad! I'll wear myself out this way. The devil with the horse. It's the campfire I need now. Cold. Chilled to the bone. Let's see now. Yes, there's the moon. I headed toward it when I left Conrad. That was an hour ago, thereabouts. Well, the campfire should be in this direction. Yes. There it is. Well, it's the biggest blaze I've ever seen. He must have piled every branch within a mile. Conrad! It's all right! Here I am! Conrad! Ah! Good heavens, what was that? The fire! It's gone! It went out like the wink of an eye. Conrad? Conrad! The darkness seemed blacker than ever before with the fire out. The echo of the scream kept ringing in Ellis's mind. He called again and again, and then suddenly... That sounds like a wagon. Conrad! Conrad, over here! Over this way! Conrad! Conrad, am I happy to see you. The horse came back, eh? Yeah, he come back. I'm so cold. I... There's a blanket up there in the back of the wagon. Just wait, I'll climb in. Yes, here it is. Oh, this is more like it, eh? I say, this blanket smells of smoke. Is this what you used to put out that fire? And that scream. I thought that was you. The wild beast, eh? Minier. We go now. Fine, fine. Oh, there's an inn at Beaufort West. After this experience, I don't mind telling you I won't object, no matter how fast you go. Who'd want to stay in a spot like this, phantom wagon or no phantom wagon? Up, up, up! The ride that followed was much faster than the earlier one. It was the wildest ride Ellis had ever been on. Several times he tried to yell at the driver to slow down. Twice he tried to claw his way up to the driver's seat and grab that hunched back to tell Jan to slow down. But the wagon plunged and heaved like a ship in a gale. It was all he could do to keep from being thrown out completely. Finally, more dead than alive, they reached the inn at Beaufort West. Ellis climbed out and staggered to the inn door. Yes, yes, such a racket in the middle of the night. It's cold. Cold. What did you expect, sir? Steam heat? Please, just let me in. The next time I ask a ride of that crazy mailman... Oh, you come with Jan Conrad. Well, of course. This is his wagon, right? <laughs> he has most like taken it to the barn. Jan always takes the wagon straight to the barn. Come in, come in, Minnie. <laughs> The innkeeper helped Ellis in. All Ellis wanted was a bed, and five minutes later he was asleep. He slept soundly until morning when the innkeeper wakened him. Minier, where is Jan Conrad? Oh, what, what, what there is, is no sign of him in the barn. 
I went there this morning. No sign of him or the wagon. Well, he's, he's gone back then. No, Menil. Please, will you let me sleep? Of course he's gone back. In a hurry to get back to Cape Town for some more mail, I expect. Menil. It is quite true that he does that often, but this time, no. Well, how do you know? There is no mail. Always he leaves mail each time he comes. This time, no mail. Menil. Are you sure that you come with Jan Conrad? The innkeeper and Ellis saddled a pair of horses. They took the trail back over the great Karoo. At first they saw nothing. Then they noticed a pair of carrion birds sailing in the air. Soon they came to a spot where the dirt road skirted high above the dry bed of the Patatas River. And in the river bed... Great Scott. It's Conrad. Yeah. Him and his wagon. What is left of them? He must have been driven off the road up above, him and his wagon. Driven off? By whom? The phantom wagoneer, Menir. But I called to him. I was lost and I called to ah, him. Ah! That is it, then. That's what? You called his name. Conrad, you call. That is what did it. Minier. do you know the name of the traitor who betrayed the wagoneer years ago? His name was Conrad also. But I rode with him. I was in the wagon. It took me to... Yeah. Yeah, Menir, but not this wagon... A different wagon, though. Perhaps the phantom wagon. A day later, Jan Conrad's horse was found, alive and well. As for Jan Conrad himself, who knows? Perhaps he did see the phantom wagoneer. After all, there may have been one. For the ride Ellis had was fast. Much too fast for any ordinary horse and wagon. Tune in for most of these stations at the same time for Walter Gibson, your expert on the supernatural. Stories of ghosts, of spirits, werewolves, and voodoo. And each story you hear is true, but strange. Strange with Walter Gibson as your expert was directed by Drex Hines. In the cast were Leon Janney and Mandel Kramer. This is Dorian St. George. Strange came to you from New York. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.